Season 5 of Shinobi Striker DLC just concluded, and many of us are looking towards the future and asking ourselves, what's next with this game? Before I give my thoughts on where the future of Shinobi Striker is headed, and my thoughts on Season 6, let's first take a look back and see how we got to this point. Naruto Tsuborto Shinobi Striker was set to be released in spring of 2018. However, Soleil being a very small developer, and major issues with the game's first open beta a month prior to that, the game was pushed back and officially released on August 31st of 2018. The first season of DLC started immediately after with Jiraiya being the first DLC character in September. Season 1 of DLC were made up of basically base roster characters, following the same VR Master format of the base roster, including hairstyles, outfits, and character t-shirts. Many of us can agree that Season 1 of DLC was the weakest, reaffirming just how undermanned Soleil was at the time. Season 2 of DLC stepped up in a big way, providing unisex outfits from all characters, getting rid of the t-shirts, and getting more creative with the rewards and secret techniques. While there is still a lot left to be desired from the game, the improvements from Season 1 to 2 are very noticeable. Season 3 and Season 4 were during the worldwide pandemic, and resulted in short seasons and shortcuts in general. While the season continued to provide creativity from the ninjutsu and ninjutsu aspect, with moves like scientific ninja tools and shirado, the game continued to get stale as the cosmetics got worse with outfits no longer being split into multiple pieces and balancing being thrown out the window, having DLC power creep and double S items be locked behind a poorly made loot system. In comes season 5, which in my opinion was the best season. Of course, the character released were all pretty good, including Tamari from a gameplay perspective and even Konohamaru brought some unique moves to the type that typically gets nothing but overpowered broken techniques. However, the standout for Season 5 was the 4 new maps that were introduced with each new DLC. Madara with the remodeled League Village, Konohamaru and the new Sand Arena, Naruto with the revamped Forest Stage, and last but not least, Ishiki and the beautifully redesigned Cloud Map. With how hard Season 5 went, it leads me to believe that the game can only be trending upward, especially with the big teaser at the end of the Ishiki DLC trailer. From this, we'll be going into my thoughts on what Season 6 needs to be even better than Season 5. So this won't really be a prediction list, though I will get me somewhat basing my thoughts in the realm of what makes sense. I'll mainly be talking about my wish list on how I feel the game can improve the best moving forward. So, if you made it this far into the video and are enjoying the information so far, go ahead and hit the like button. Also, make sure you subscribe because I'll be dropping a lot more information on Shinobi Striker and Naruto in the future. I bet. Let's get into this. So first and foremost, at this point in the game's life cycle, we wholeheartedly need some new modes. As much as these new DLC items and maps have improved the game within the last season, it only captures the casual player base's attention for maybe a week or two. The game needs something fresh. And so here are my thoughts on how to go about doing that. First, we absolutely need custom matchmaking and spectator mode. Outside of new maps, this has been the most requested feature since the beta. The community has been making clans long before the game was even created, of which I myself was a part of during the game's infancy. Despite not having this feature available, the community still continues to make clans and friend groups to play with each other casually or compete in tournaments. A team-based game like Shinobi Striker that is heavily balanced as such should have had this feature at the forefront of its development, especially when the game is promoted by a tuning exam, one of the most iconic tournaments in all of anime. This feature is an absolute must-have at this point, and for all those who might think that this might cause the events like Ninja World League or Quick Match to be dead, I actually think the opposite will happen. More players will likely stay, with all the competitive players playing each other, allowing for them to grow properly. Casual players will also be setting up their own matches as well, and with more people online to play the game because they can play who, what, and where they want at any given time, they will be more incentivized to do events for event rewards and scrolls. This new feature can only really help the game. Next, I've been seeing a lot of people throwing out the idea of a battle royale mode, and given the complexities of the new maps, I absolutely agree that they should create a new map for such a thing. Imagine the remodeled rain map in the giant city where 8 teams of 3 fight against each other for scrolls or a deathmatch. There are so many ideas to pull from this mode, so I won't get into details on how I think it could work. Just know that with how the game is set up, it could absolutely work. Some quality of life modes that I can think of is like survival exercise has its casual mode and event called Ninja World Face Off. Ninja Hero Festival should also have a non-event mode available at all times, simply called Hero Mode. That way those who like playing without creative characters can have a mode simply for them. Another quality of life mode would be a camera mode in the lobby. The fixed angles of the camera is terrible in the lobby and the developers know this because the screenshots they take have much better angles than ours. Additionally, they are constantly doing screenshot events, some of which even display our pictures on the screen in the lobby. 
with all the emotes and outfits that are available in the game, allow us to take advantage of them by simply adding a camera mode to the lobby. An official practice mode would do wonders for the game, being able to control the bot, see the percentages and numbers on different attacks and buffs, and learn about the game would elevate the playing experience for the community. I thought they would ever implement something like this though because then we would see firsthand the bias of the attack class. Now let's shift gears and talk about my thoughts on Season 6 itself. We know that with each new DLC comes a new update and balance patches, so when those days come, I'll go further into detail on how I would update the game or balance the moveset and ninjutsu. That aside, Season 5 has also shown us that new DLC comes with new maps, and I think that this trend should remain. Of course, we want to focus this season to be geared towards new modes if we had to choose between the two, but both is definitely preferred. Let's talk characters for Season 6. My wish list is simple. I want Kaguya, Momoshiki, Shinki, Sasori, and Darui. But do I think all these characters are likely? Nah, Shinki isn't relevant enough and they've already reached their black character quota with Killer B, so Darui is out. But what about Kaguya, Momoshiki, and Sasori? Well, let's talk about it. My prediction for Season 6 DLC characters. Given what we know about the teaser at the end of the Ishiki trailer, we can almost guarantee that Kaguya will be a DLC character, so I'll throw her in. Right now, the code arc is airing for Naruto's Sun show, so his moveset will be explored there. I could see this being similar to having Six Path Madara and Kaguya being a DLC and then Ishiki and Code being the other hype DLC. So based purely on the hype surrounding these Naruto Sun characters, I'm going to be adding Code to the list because he'll definitely have a moveset to pull from by next year. Sasori has been in the files for a while as Scrap, and puppy users are highly requested. Given the nature of the creativity Soleil and the new people helping at Tencent, I'm confident they know what to do with a puppet user, so it'll be an easy add, especially if they want to focus more on the new modes and maps using already made assets will help. That leaves just two characters left for this season. To help me decide who the last two characters will be, I first gotta create a theme for the season and find out what these three characters already have in common. Well, they are all villains, but can that really be the theme of the season? Last year they dropped the Will of Fire at the end of the Kawaki trailer, and then we got Legacy. So if we look for clues in the battle continue statement, the theme might revolve around war. So I'll just have to go with Edo Minato as he's likely to win the new manga series poll and Obito because I need his drip to make Utari official. And there you have it, my thoughts on season 6 and what we need to make it great. As always, share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to support the channel by leaving a like on the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.